Bobby Carpenter grew up as the son of a well-loved minister in Southern California. He occasionally got into trouble, but took on his father's work ethic. He was young and I could put him under one of my trucks and he could pull out the transmission and put it back in. Bob Carpenter Sr. was a minister in California and Bobby's father. After preaching several years at a church in Riverside, Bob purchased an asphalt company in the city of Hemet. And at the age of 15, Bobby began working for the family business called RSK Griffith Asphalt. It was 17 years later on a hot day in July of 1998. Bobby had been married for less than a year and was working with his sister Sherry when he noticed a problem inside one of the tanks. Without hesitation, Bobby climbed the rig and crawled into the tank half filled with tar. Bobby, of course, gets up there, jumps into the tar inside the tank and starts feeling around to unplug it. Bobby jumped in. He's, Bobby's the type that if it needed to fix it, he's going to fix it. And so he jumped in that tank, got down in there, and was trying to uh, get it unplugged so we could get material out the back through the pump. The agitator PTO had not been shut off. So when one of the men started up the truck, the agitator spun around, striking Bobby in the neck. Bobby was knocked unconscious and continually fluttered in the tar inside the tank. And sure, he asked, where's Bobby? And they looked around and Bobby was nowhere to be found and then Sherry knew exactly where Bobby was at. Uh, once that truck started and started to move, she knew that he was in that tank. So I just dropped everything, ran, climbed up the side of the tank, got inside the tank, jumped down into the tar under the bar and started feeling for him and I felt him and pulled him up as quick as I could. Well, little as she is, she jumped up into that tank at the very top got down inside it, lifted Bobby up out of the seal coat, and then she lifted him up, which was about five foot up. I just sprayed him off, laid him flat, sprayed him off, and felt for a pulse, didn't, didn't feel a pulse, and saw a little blood coming out of his mouth, and so I just gave him CPR. She carried him over to uh, the grass, which was on the side of the road, and then she took a hose and started washing Bobby's face, mouth, and everything out because he was covered. I mean, it wasn't a white place on him. And so she started washing him off, washing his mouth out, washing everything out. And then she started giving him uh, artificial respiration. Bobby's breathing came and went as Sherry continued with mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. When paramedics arrived, Bobby was rushed to the hospital and resuscitated numerous times. That Bobby knew that he was not gonna die. He was not gonna let the old Devil man come and get him. It was Bobby's C5 and C6 vertebrae and the trachea that was crushed in the accident. Bobby remained in critical condition in intensive care for weeks, and doctors continued trying to clean his lungs before calling a family meeting. We went back in there to Bobby, and the reason they brought us back here, they figured Bobby's going to die. But Bobby didn't give up. He was comatose for three months, going in and out of surgery. Bobby went into a coma and was rushed to different hospitals. He had 18 surgeries on his neck, his back, and his heart. But Bobby's wife was very unhappy with the situation. Uh, they ended up going through a divorce while he was in the hospital. When Bobby got out of the hospital, he moved in with his sister Sherry. and They have now lived together for more than 10 years. In spite of his paralysis, Bobby controls all wheelchair motion using only his mouth. Bobby is able to steer himself in an Xperia Healthcare wheelchair and loves nothing more than getting out of the house and spending an afternoon on the road. And I still think one of these days, the Lord's going to make his uh, arms and legs work again. So if you want to meet a really great person, he is the one. He is the best. He handles it well. It's like he doesn't have a handicap at all. In spite of his paralysis, Bobby controls all wheelchair motion using only his mouth. Bobby, I don't know, I think he's gotten smarter since he got hurt because I can ask him questions and he can answer them and he always comes up, well, Dad, did you do this? You know, did you do that? Did, did this work? Well, that don't work, Dad, let's do it this way. And that's the life of Bobby Carpenter, a man who has survived debilitating injuries but still lives a full life, enjoying shopping, movies, and working on the board of directors with the RSK Griffith Asphalt Corporation.